welcome back. Today we're gonna be digging into this specific Powerful Packs box. I was gonna say the month, but I don't know what the month it is. I also feel like it's been a while since I unboxed one of these, but the way my brain's been working lately, it could have been last week. So let's just open it up, find out what's inside, and make something with it. Beautiful green maggots. Well, Powerful really likes their graphics fineliner things. Oh wait, these aren't fineliners. These are sketch markers. So I'm wondering if they're alcohol based. They look like many alcohol based marker. So it's the Marabou Graphics Sketch Marker. It does say alcohol based and there are six colors. It looks like it's bullet nib and chisel. Oh hey. I've tried quite a few different alcohol based markers. Most of them are all pretty similar. Then there are the top tier, which you have like the Copic sketch markers and then the cheapest best, you have kind of like the Ohus over there. So I'm not sure what the price is. I think helpful is the retail price on their menus. They do feel really light. They do have the gray marker base with the little half filled color marked on either end with just a number. They don't have a color name and the caps like gonna guess don't fit on the other end. No, they do not. Oh, wait. <gasps> wow, it does because it's wider at the base than it is at the end. <laughs> it's actually a nice tight fit. I feel like with the more recent Ohu brush markers, they don't, they fit, but they're not like, if you draw too aggressively, it's gonna fly right off. All right, next up I see, this is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the color gold. I think it's metallic, cause it looks like, it sure looks metallic to me. Also, ooh, six more sketch markers. That makes me think of the Mandalorian. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> <laughs> wee, wee, wee. You can see them in their natural habitat. So these are a gray tone set. It looks like there are three cool grays and three warm grays. Just looking at the caps. Oh, they do have color names. Do a little connect the dots with the numbers to them. Cool gray deep, warm gray deep, cool gray, warm gray, cool gray light, and warm gray light. So three tones for each of those. Mixing grays with colors is a really good way to be able to get more variety in your colors. All right, next up. Oh, there's another Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the color white. So if it's opaque enough, it can be used like as a gel pen, but it's not looking super opaque. It's also not like super transparent either. So we'll have to see that in action. All right, and then we have two pigment liners by Alt Alternatives. One is in 0.5, my favorite, and the other is in 0.3. Powerful put these in a box not too long ago, and I've been using them a lot. They are kind of in my go-to stash right here. That's actually the 0.3 one. Ooh. So I quite like these. They work really well with alcohol-based markers. Anything else? Something bright orange. Here's the menu. How much are those sketch markers? A box of six is $17.99. Was that about like $3 a marker? It's not bad. That's a, that's about a median price for an alcohol-based marker. They do feel light though. I don't know if that's... But this old Ohu marker is definitely heavier. It could just be thicker plastic. Mm, not saying the Pit Artist pens are made of India ink. And if I remember correctly, India ink does not mix well with alcohol-based markers. So I'm guessing these have to be used last. But we'll try that when we swatch it. Let's take a look at the paper. They really found the right size box for this. So this is Bristol paper, okay. Nine by 12 by Seth Cole. Acid-free and archival. Alcohol markers aren't very archival on their own. At least the paper is. Can you imagine like a museum in uh, 200 years? They're like, and here we have the art piece, but which once was. The paper made it, but the, the art didn't. I don't know. I don't make art for it to last, so I don't really care, but. It's more about the making it for me. So let's try out and swatch these on the paper. How many sheets? 12 sheets in here. Can you hear that? Feels like Bristol board. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, it's kind of thin. I'm like, no, it's actually kind of thick. And I'm like, no, it's, it's about a Bristol board. So there are color names on this box. Carbon black. The gray is next. I do wish that they had the color names on the cap. Cool gray, light. That is the names on the little sticker. But I'm more of a cap reader. I can't tell you if I've ever actually read the color name on a Copic marker. I don't even know if the color name's on the Copic. It must be. Cool gray and cool gray deep. You have your warm grays, warm gray light, warm gray, warm gray deep. Beautiful. Is it bleeding? Not too bad. All right, then we have our colors. So we have five primary colors. Start with yellow. Primary yellow is the name of the color. Light green. 
Very creative names here. Primary blue. Primary magenta. I feel like the bullet nibs are bigger on the colored ones, or am I just drawing that circle bigger? The world may never know. And then primary. Oh no, this is called vermilion. Gotta love your basics. Oh, no variety in value there, but that's what you use the grays for. Oh, we gotta test these guys. The point three. The point five. My personal fave. Not too much variation in those two, but the more art you do, I think the more you'll see the difference. And then we have the Pit Artist pen. This one's in gold, and this one's in white. I don't see it at all. Maybe it's one you gotta like draw in the same spot. Okay, I see the dots. Almost not visible. Not my go-to white pen. White pens though are just finicky on their own, so when you find a good one, hold on to that because it will only last so long. All right, so far I love everything. These are some really nice colors. They don't look muddy at all, which is what I really like to see in primary colors. Sometimes with Ohu, the, the color saturation and stuff isn't where it could be but that's kind of the trade-off with the price and it's always fun to have like little sets so you can like supplement whatever collection you do have or to start a brand new collection so let's see what we can make with just these and uh let's see what we can make they didn't provide a pencil so i guess that's up to me i've been using the colorace colored pencil in pink for a while and it's been serving me very well so we'll continue with that i think what would be fun is to try and mix the grays with those so that we can get some nice Nice variation, right? So like if I take yellow, you'd want to mix it with the warm grays. Like you could go cool gray, but then it's going to start looking a lot more muted because it is a warm color. So like if I wait, draw like a line here and then we use the warm grays to see what they look like when you layer them. Ooh, that looks kind of green. Ugh. Sometimes they look a little better if you go back over it with the original color. And then you can see that you have yellow and then you have three other variations of that same yellow with just, I was gonna say two markers, but that's four markers. But you could use those three grays in conjunction with some other hues. So that's the point. I'm gonna just do this with the other ones and uh, I'll meet you back after that. Now, I don't know if you were around, but that video where I was practicing my color theory with markers, and I was taking heavy inspiration from a video by Zoe Hung, which I will link below because it was very, very helpful. What I remember was that you want to find grays that work well with your primary colors or with your hues specifically. See how this green is most similar to this gray in tone? And you're supposed to like mix those to get the best color variation. I said I'd meet you back after this. There you go. Voila. Let me take one of the lighter ones. Go over the Pit Artist Pen and see if it blends or bleeds or lifts. I don't know what the word is. It's definitely gone where I drew with the marker. These little touches will have to definitely go last. But it can show you that these pigment liners work really well. They don't bleed. There's definitely gold on the end of this. You can see it's like red in that first line. I think that's from the gold liner. And then it became more of the warm gray that it is. I think I'm ready to jump in and then start sketching some ideas out. First thing I want to do is try and make like an outfit that relies most heavily on the grays and then maybe one pop of color and see how that works. I'm gonna move it to a horizontal angle. Landscape as the artists call it. Not that I'm drawing landscapes. <laughs> but without further ado let me get my move on. Where to start? Sketch out a good old person. My fave. I did not have a pose in mind so we'll just go the outfits what i'm thinking is like basically every element is very black or gray and then we'll give her like a t-shirt that's a really bright pop of color or something like that so, like what's coming to my mind right now is like turtleneck big shirt t-shirt kind of thing maybe it's tied and then skirt maybe some feet would be nice knees maybe long sleeves this goes against my drawing warm clothes in the summer <laughs> thigh high socks kind of misdrawing those maybe some kind of texture with the grays like a plaid then maybe this is gray gray or black gray or black and then we'll use a really fun pop of color either for the skirt or the shirt 
Yeah, some hair like that. Hair. <laughs> Very internet-y, I guess. I can't say I've ever actually seen people in my day-to-day -day wearing anything like this. I wish I had. Okay, now, since we have good liners, we can go ahead and do line art first, but I feel like going and doing color first. We don't have really anything to use as a flesh tone, but I could use the lightest warm gray. Let's just worry about the outfit then. Let's tweak the face a smidge. So let's go with the outfit. Thinking like some nice contrasting plaid or something. Black socks maybe. Oh, I don't have shoes. Two big sneakers. Shoes. Thinking black socks with white sneakers. I don't know if that's taboo or something, but. Actually, we don't want to use black. We want to avoid black as much as possible. Let's just do the darkest, maybe cool gray. Maybe we'll stick with the cool grays to try and make a more cohesive color scheme. Over here, so I'm not tempted to grab the warm grays. Start there. See what happens. Lightest gray for the shoes. Maybe leave a little white where I can. The darkest one again for like a little symbol. A little something. Maybe the laces. Do this kind of out of order and do the line art over the legs. Little kneecaps and shoes. That was the whole point about that. <laughs> These look so goofy and marshmallowy. I love it. I'm rethinking this. I was originally thinking the shirt would be the vibrant color, but what if we want to make her hair match the vibrant color? This is so e-girl, but it's fine. <laughs> well, maybe if it's a white and like pink plaid, I think I can get away with this. Let's see. Big stripes. I'm not actually that opposed to just these vertical stripes either. Twisty, twisty. Maybe go in with the mid-tone gray. Go over where they'd overlap. Draw little squares. And we could probably use the lightest gray for a little shading. I feel like it needs maybe the- I if we can see if we can do something with this white pit artisan. Come on, show up for me. Do something. Ooh, okay. Just like putting it anywhere kind of makes it look more like a fabric. Now maybe do the darkest gray turtleneck. The light gray. And then let's go with like an ombre hair. So maybe start with like the mid-tone and go into the cyan. Is that what this color is? Magenta. Why the heck did I say cyan? Magenta. This is magenta. It's magenta! Color that in. Space buns. Go into that mid-tone gray. what they call it? They just called it warm. Do I want the warm one for this? Eh, why change it up now? See how cool that looks when you start laying the grays? I'm gonna have to switch between these. The darker gray. I think I'm gonna use the darkest cool gray for the hair. Now that I'm seeing it, I think it's necessary. But we can use this uh, mid-tone one for the shading. I think it works well there, but for the ombre, rather the darker one. We'll go over it just to make it more cohesive. That means we can use this guy. Shading back here. I feel like we could get away with a little bit of pink down here too. Go over the laces. Since it's gray, it's not gonna look too muddy, so perfect. All right, I think I'll go ahead and do the liner on the face and the rest of the body. Figure out where the hands go in here. I really like doing the line art after the color. I don't know what it is. It just feels less stressful. For some reason when I do line art on its own, I'm like way too stressed about making it perfect. But if the color is already there, it's like, I feel like a lot of the work's done for me. It's like, I already know the basic shapes. Like that job's done. Add line art where you think you need it. It doesn't necessarily need to go everywhere. Whereas when you're doing it before color, you're like, you're doing all the work. You're making sure that you can actually tell what the drawing is before the color's even there. And that's a lot of pressure. Little dangly bang things. They're probably a bad idea. Or I should have put more thought into them. I think I'll add some lipstick in that magenta. I can even add a little shading on the corners. Now, do I want to add some makeup? Oh, should we add a lighter pink? I could try the warm gray mix with the pink. Blend it out. What if I take magenta and the lightest warm gray and like dab it like that and then go over the nose? Make it a little pinker. 
It'll just look like mud. Blend it out maybe with the warm. So now what I'm gonna do with the next one. Make a note of that. <laughs> I'm gonna just put some abstract shape on here. Cool beans! I really like the idea of mostly grays with pops of color. Probably could even gone away with like less color, but I think it worked really well. Let's try another one with a different color. I wanna do like a similar thing with the outfit. Try and keep it simple. But maybe make the pose a little bit more interesting this time. Hand on hip, put this arm behind the shoulder head. Do short hair this time. Now for the outfit, what do we want to do with this? Let's do pants. I feel like I never drop pants anymore. Maybe capris. People still wear capris. I mean, I like roll up my pants when it's really hot. I used to own some. Ooh, maybe a baseball tee with the raglan sleeve. Maybe give her a baseball hat to fit the theme. Just do flats. I was gonna do sneakers. Well, sneakers does fit the theme better, doesn't it? Yeah, let's just do sneakers. Maybe just more of a flat sneaker instead of the big chunky ones. And maybe a little sock. Why not? That's a cute fun pose. Look at that. All right, let's go with color. I'm feeling either blue or red for this. Red seems like the logical choice. Should I try and use two different hues, like red and blue? If I'm gonna do that, I definitely need to lean heavily on one and then just accent the other. Yeah, I think with this one, it's almost even amounts of gray and pink, whereas I'd like to go even more gray and like less of the highlight color. Let's just do red for this go. And then should we try the warm grays? Okay. Let's do basic tea. That's kind of what inspired most of the look. Cat. And the devil shading back here, I'll use the mid-tone first. I think I'm gonna leave the front of the hat white. Just like this, I'm gonna leave that white. I'm gonna go ahead and do line art of it. Whoosh. I guess I could do the arms because I still don't know what I'm going to do with skin. There's really no flesh tones of any kind except maybe that light warm gray. It's going to look really meh. It's not going to look vibrant in the hat. A little texture to the brim. Hair. We could maybe just use one of the grays and then the sh pants. Maybe we'll go with mid-tone first because I can always layer it. Whoa, is this the mid-tone? No, it's the darkest one. That's probably where we're going to end up anyway. Almost went all the way down to the sneaker. Taking that darker one and just using it for like shading here and blending that out. And when you want to get really good blending, if you're using markers with a chisel and a bullet nib, always use a chisel because it's going to be a lot juicier and you'll get a lot easier blend. Then let's do little red shoes. Now oh, they look like vans. I should have left space for the laces. <laughs> Oops, see, add some line art to these pants. Some pockets. We need some laces. Maybe try the pit artist pen. Bring a little white into the lace. Is that the warm gray? They look so similar. Very subtle, I guess. Let me try using the lightest one. Shading. And hair. I'm thinking, let's just go straight deep warm gray for the hair. I think this was a good decision. I'm not gonna be able to go darker or lighter for any like variation. So we're going all in. Hey. Okay, let's go ahead and do the line art. See if there's something we can do with the skin and hopefully it doesn't end up like that. Eyeballs. That's the scariest part about doing the line art last is the eyes. I feel like I messed them up a little bit more when I go this route. Could just be a brain thing, but I don't know. Try a little lipstick. I don't know about skin. There's not really a way to dilute these easily. I mean, you can mix it with rubbing alcohol, which I actually do have on handy. On hand. <laughs> the old handy palette. Ancient rubbing alcohol. Maybe the red. Draw a little on there. Dump a smidge of this. Oh wait, I don't have a paintbrush handy. Don't draw on me yet! Look, it bled out. We can try that. It should be a little diluted. We can do like, I don't know, blush or something. Eee, cute. This isn't really optimal. It works in a pinch. You want to dilute the color a little. Go underneath the hat. We haven't used the gold pen yet. Let's see if it stands out anywhere. I don't know what happened with the lips. They look like they exploded. What about some graphic on our tee? Okay, that ended up just being a dot. <laughs> I swear I had grander visions than that. Ooh, it does stick out. Look at those gold laces. Try a little highlight in the eyeball. Let's try the gold like intermingled with this plaid. Silver probably makes more sense. 
circle on her hat. <laughs> I don't know why I laughed like that. All right, I want to do this again with the other colors because this is really fun. I wish I had taken advantage of mixing with rubbing alcohol the uh, skirt there. I think that would have looked cool. We haven't done blue, green, or yellow. I'm gonna sketch something and then whatever color that makes me think of, we'll go with that. Let's try crisscrossing the old legs. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I just drew. It's a little scrunched funky. Put the arm more across like that. And then this arm could be like, I don't know, holding that hand? That seems doable. Got a pose. Try one with like the hair blowing in the wind. The ears. Do like a bow in the hair? This is making me feel blue or yellow so far. Be a high heel shoe. I'm trying to let this little bow in her hair inspire me. And all I can think of is Blossom from the Powerpuff Girls. Maybe go with it. Roll with what's inspiring me. I went over the entire piece, kind of fleshed out the shape. This is what I got so far. Quite happy with it. Maybe give her some kind of necklace. I think it's ready for a little color. I think I'll go with yellow. Shoot, why did I color the hair yellow and why am I using that nib? <laughs> this might not have been thought out very well. What am I gonna use for her outfit? Maybe darkest warm gray for this bow. Kinda looks like bunny ears. <laughs> Maybe we just switch over to green. We're using more colors this time. Dark gray bottoms. It looks like a dark diaper. What color shoes? Let's start with green. I think I can go dark gray on top of that, but I can't really do green on top of dark gray. Maybe a little green makeup. Green eyes. Green lips? Nah. <laughs> a green necklace. Let's do line art. Maybe do a little fun details. Pattern of some kind. Oh, we gotta do some green earrings. It's time to shine. On a point three. Add a little extra little details in here. Be green. Yeah, better than it was. Necklace. Going with this. See anything needs to be fixed yet. So that's good. It needs to be going really well. I'm also thinking about adding green to the hair. It's like a green and yellow mixture. I don't think it's necessary. I think I like the yellow. keep using these like half a square for kneecaps. Every time I do it, I think of Hercules. <laughs> I mean, Hercules. I didn't commit to that and it showed. <laughs> Fill in some of these gaps that I missed. I don't know if it's obvious, but I'm having a lot of fun with this box. Even though I already kind of own these art supplies, but that's still my favorite. So I mean, once you find an art supply that you love, you'll know it. Okay, light gray. Maybe I can add a little depth back here, a little shadow. Push it further back. I can go in with the pink pencil and maybe add in the blush. Can you stay off the little rug thing that makes noise? You wonder we could do that anywhere! I still wish we had some kind of flesh tone. These people are all very pissed. Oh, I wanted to try and do a pattern. I'm gonna grab the lightest gray first. Let's try and poke a dot. It's very concentrated. That's actually really cute. This reminds me of something. I don't know if it's like an old character from the 90s, but it feels familiar. Is that Angela's doll from like the Rugrats? Maybe Angel is the doll. It's been so long. <laughs> Put a little green over the warm gray just to bring it into the color scheme. Make it a little more cohesive. Very cute. I like that one a lot. I feel like this one's begging for the gold. I just don't know where to put it. Oh, that works. Like little dots, like beads. Maybe polka dots on uh, the ribbon. Be a ring of some kind. Let's try something else. Still have to use blue. Maybe a ponytail? I want to do like a big skater skirt, half circle, full circle skirt thing. How many words can I use? These aren't as in style as much as they used to be, but oh, they're so cute. 
not feeling the hair anymore. Maybe something else. I wouldn't mind mixing a couple colors, kind of like I did the yellow and green there. That was really fun. Maybe little spaghetti straps. So seem dainty. Maybe knee-high socks this time. <laughs> Maybe not. This one was begging for a pattern too. Guess I should draw on these hands. And then this hand's stuck behind there, so you're not gonna see it. You'd see a smidge of it, but it's not gonna look good if I draw a smidge of it, so we'll give her a scrunchie. This one looks fun. Let's go ahead and add a little color. Blue's what's left. We'll do like blue on both spots and then use cool grays for layering. Get some variety in the tone. Crunchy. White skirt's actually a cute idea too. But we keep doing white for the skin, so I guess we'll just focus on the outfits for now. We'll leave a little gap, make it a crop, and then we'll have to figure out something, kind of pattern maybe. We're just filling it in with the other grays. But we'll find out. Together. The same way we started this. Together. Kind of filling it in by section. What kind of shoes? I didn't really draw them in. Okay, that's one of the best hands of the video. Go we'll just do vans, kind of like those ones. Should I go with the white ankle socks too? I'm gonna draw first is using the lightest gray for the hair. Oh yeah, remember when gray hair was in style? But this reminds me of. I feel like everybody, and their mother, literally, had gray hair that year. Now 2020 is just giving everybody gray hairs. <laughs> Looks very elven. I'm try stripes. I'm darker. I don't think I like the idea of the stripes. Maybe some like geometric patterns. Guess I'm committing to this. It's not quite showing up. Not the most visible thing in the world. Put a little clips in her hair. Be something on that side too. Blue eyes. Looks really creepy without the rest of it. Let's just do line art while I ponder the pattern idea. Still using the point three. Peace. This blue is kind of a darkish in value, so you need to go over it with a darker gray. I'm just gonna try and do plaid, but better maybe. Although I don't feel like it fits the outfit very well. You know, we do what we can. I'm not liking this very much at all. I think it's just the shape it just doesn't quite work for this idea, you know? Oop, that's black. Oop. Let me add liner to that. Maybe I can find some shape in there. Try and use those pit artist pens. Little pick me ups. Ooh, that shows up really well on this. It's not what I was expecting. This isn't what you've done the entire time. Jeez. Going over that with blue. Going over with some of that light red over all their skin. Since it's mixed already, and I had to use more rubbing alcohol just to clean it off here. This is a very nice yellow. You have like Crayola yellows. I'm just adding hearts all over it. Cause that's what you do. <laughs> Maybe a little gold. I'm filling the page. <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, oh, I should cut these out and like glue them into my sketchbook. Let's check in the bleed. Wow, that held up really well. Like you can see it, but you can tell it's not coming through to the other side. It's just like the light coming through almost. This is my favorite. I like the. Well, I had fun. <laughs> Hope you did too. I don't really feel the need to like draw anything else with the supplies. I had fun just sketching from the imagination, doing a little doodly do, as you do. I need to give a big thank you to Powerful Packs for sending this box my way, and I want to thank you guys for watching and making it through to the end of the video. I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!